Okay, looking at tissue fluid formation in a capillary bed. So you have blood coming in in this direction and it's leaving in this direction. So this here is the arterial end of the capillary bed and this is the venous end. So the arterial end, this is going coming from the heart and this bit of the venous end is returning back to the heart. Now, contained in the blood is going to be, um, for instance, there's going to be red blood cells. There's going to be white blood cells, there's going to be water and the dissolved products in the water, the products of digestion. You're also going to have big plasma proteins in here and platelets. Now the capillary walls are permeable to small things, so they're not permeable to the cellular components and they're not permeable to the big plasma proteins. So you have forces that are in opposition. So at this end of the capillary bed, you've got a hydrostatic pressure, and the hydrostatic pressure is forcing blood, it's forcing tissue, sorry, forcing plasma out of the blood and then into the tissues, where we then call it tissue fluid. Tissue fluid is just plasma without the plasma protein. Now, because the plasma proteins remain in here, the osmotic potential of the blood is lower is more negative than it is in the tissues. So you have a hydrostatic pressure that's forcing it out and you've got an osmotic pressure that's drawing the tissue fluid back into the plasma. The reason for that is that the osmotic pressure here is more negative than the osmotic pressure out here because of these dissolved plasma proteins. Now this osmotic pressure still exists at the other end down here. However, the hydrostatic pressure this hydrostatic pressure is a lot, lot, lot less because the fall in pressure that's occurred across the capillary and also the fact that some of the um, tissue fluid hasn't been reabsorbed because it's gone into the lymphatic system. So at this end, we have a higher hydrostatic pressure than we have osmotic pressure, whereas at this end, we have still the same osmotic pressure, but because the hydrostatic pressure has fallen, then at this end, the net difference is that the fluid is going to be returned back in at this. So it's going to be forced out here because the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure, but here, the osmotic pressure is greater than the hydrostatic pressure, so it's going to be drawn back in. Now remember, you also additionally have another system, um, which is not a circulatory system, it is a drainage system, and this drainage system is the lymphatic system, and when tissue fluid that's been forced out passes in here, and it's about 10% of the tissue fluid goes into the lymphatic system, it then passes through the lymphatic system and drains back into your bloodstream in the thoracic duct.